this video, I want to review the idea of internal validity. Uh, I'm going to, in the next few videos, move on to talking about uh, what are called threats, threats to internal validity. So before I talk about those threats to internal validity, I want to review what we mean uh, by internal validity. So this has to do with causality. In other words, this has to do with when we are doing a study uh, where we're asking the question of uh, are changes in one variable causing changes in another? Not just are the variables changing together, not just is there covariance or a relationship but between the variables, but is, is one of the variables actually causing changes in the other variable? So the most common type of study that we would do to show that one thing is causing another is an experiment. So internal validity most often comes up when you're looking at experiments and how to design an experiment well, how to des design an experiment so that you are justified or correct or valid in saying that one variable is causing changes in another. Now, the general form that we use here is we make a comparison between conditions. So this would look something like this where we have, we have we'll call it condition one, and we have condition two. Now these conditions, uh, in the past we've talked about this in terms of groups. So we might call this group, group one and group two. In other words, we have two different groups of people and we're going to compare them in, uh, in some way. So we've talked before about the idea, maybe we're looking at people who are sick and we're looking at the degree to which they're sick, and we have some kind of treatment that we're going to give uh, the groups, and, and there are going to be different treatments depending on which group. Maybe the, the sort of simplest way we could design this is one group gets no treatment, and the other group, yes, they do get a treatment. By the way, these are called, this would be, this would be called the independent variable independent variable, which again is the variable in the experiment that we are directly manipulating ourselves. So we can manipulate whether people get the treatment, yes they get it, or no they don't. These would be called levels, levels of the independent variable. This is just terminology that people use. These are two different levels of the variable. In this case, it's just, yes, they get the treatment, maybe some kind of medicine, they get it, or no, they don't. But we could have uh, different dosages. So this could, we could have, we could have, instead of two groups, we could have 10 different groups that each get a different dosage of this treatment or a different form of it. So we have different levels of the independent variable, each level, each, each group is treated with a different level, and that is, that is where the different groups come from. For example, in the textbook, they talk about the independent variable, the levels of the independent variable creating different groups. And that's what they mean, is just that all they're saying is you, you have uh, different groups of people, and you're going to give some different form or level of the variable to each person. So we've talked about this in terms of groups. But of course, this could also be talked about in terms of time. So we could talk about time one and time two. In this case, instead of having where, it, where we, before we would compare one group with another group at the same time, now we're looking at comparing one single group at two different times. So we can compare two different groups at the same time or one group at two different times. And that's why I used the terms condition one and condition two because the conditions can be either uh, two different groups of people where we're comparing the conditions between those two groups or two people, you know, the same people at two different times where we're comparing conditions between different times. So in that case, we would be giving the treatment or not giving the treatment to the, per to the people at time one and we would measure how sick they are. And maybe, maybe when we do that, we see that they are this sick. And then we give them the treatment. We measure them at time two, and we see that they are less sick. And so the idea is because of this difference here, the, the people are less sick. We would like to say that we caused them to be less sick by the, that the treatment caused them to be less sick. In other words, that, that this here is what is responsible for that difference. 
Now, one of the issues here is that for us to be justified, for us to be valid in making that conclusion and saying that our treatment caused the observed difference between the conditions, that has to be the only explanation. So in order to have internal validity, in order to be justified in saying that we have determined the causality of something, we have to have one and only one explanation for what we for the difference that we observe so one and only one explanation and if on the other hand we have an alternative explanation alternative explanations mean that there's some other reason why we might have seen that difference and thus we are not justified in claiming that our treatment caused the difference and that that is what we call a threat to internal validity. And what we'll see is that there are different types of threats to internal validity that depend on the particular uh, way that we're setting up our experiment. If we're doing a comparison between groups, so the different conditions are really different groups of people, we can get issues like maybe the people in this group, maybe the people in this group have better immune systems. And if they have better immune systems, then that difference, them being less sick, might be due to those pre-existing characteristics rather than to our treatment. So that is an alternate, alternative explanation, and therefore it's a threat to internal validity. Uh, another issue, if we were talking about something like uh, looking at the same group of people at two different times, so we test the people at time one, and we test the people at time two, and we see that after we've given them the treatment at time two, they are less sick. But maybe uh, during that time, they have uh, antibodies. Their immune systems manufactured antibodies, and those antibodies are what caused them to be less sick. That's what caused the difference rather than the treatment. That's what's uh, an example of what is called a time-related threat to internal validity. It's something that happened over the course, over the time uh, of our study and presents an alternative explanation uh, to compete with the idea that the treatment was what uh, caused that difference. So again, that's an alternative explanation. It means it's a threat to validity, or in other words, a reason why we're not really sure what it was that caused the difference we observed. So that's the overall idea of internal validity and of having a threat to internal validity. And in the next few videos, I'll take you through some examples of different types of threats to internal validity.